Hey, so now we're going to dive into the code to take pictures. And uh, again, this is sort of not, um, it's not like I'm super proud of this. This is just a little bit complicated. And so I didn't want it to freak you out. And so I wanted to walk through exactly what I was doing. This is more like a problem solving sort of um, tutorial or, you know, this is, this is sort of something I had to do in order to get things to work, not like this is how you should how you should build applications. Um, although, I guess this is how I think you should build applications if you need to take a picture in a, a single a single activity uh, Android app. So let's start out in our main activity. So this is our main activity. And it's an app compat activity. So we, we've seen all this sort of stuff before, and we've got a view model, and you know this is all sort of good. And then. Uh, one, one thing I'm doing here is I'm telling the view model uh, how to take a picture. And um, it, it sort of would have been nice if the view model could just have called this function from our, our, our activity, but the, the view model is not allowed to have a reference to our activity because the view model's lifetime is longer than any individual activity. I mean, for this application where we have a single activity, which comes up in the beginning and lasts the entire application, they're actually, this, the, the lifetimes are the same, but in terms of these two abstractions, the view model always lasts as long as the entire application, uh, the activity does not. And so this is sort of a way of this is almost like setting a function pointer. So we we could have done that also. We could have um, passed this as a function pointer into the view model. Uh, here I'm just passing it as a lambda, and the lambda is just you know calling this function. So I'm telling the view model, hey, when you want to take a picture, call this function. This function, take a picture intent, is doing a start activity for result. Okay, that is sort of the primary thing that's going on here because we need to activate the camera. However, uh, we also, in addition to activating the camera, we need to pass it an argument, and that argument is the file that the camera should write the image into. And that's going to be a file in our application's area, but we have to give permission to the camera to do that. And so that's a little bit of a, a, a complicated dance. And so, uh, you know, in order to start the camera, we are sending an, an uh, implicit intent, uh, image capture intent to um, the, the system. And um, we are putting an argument in that intent, our extra output argument, which I don't quite know what's extra about it. This is like the, the only output we care about, is a URI, which is a, sort of a wrapper around uh, a local file name for the file where the photo gets written. And that is going to be decided on by the view model. <clears throat> the location is chosen by the view model and the view model is also gonna remember that choice. So this is not robust in the face of taking multiple pictures at the same time, which would be kind of a weird thing to do, but you could be taking a picture in one app and then uh, put it on the back stack and do another app. So anyway. Um, yeah, so we are we are telling the camera, uh, we're sorry, we're telling Android, we want you to take a picture. We want you to put the picture at this URI and, and then do it. And we're, this uh, request code is just an arbitrary request code that is gonna allow us uh, in our callback on activity for result to know what, um, what, um, um, what activity is is uh, is finishing, and when we do our our uh, firestore, we're actually going to see one of the, the our first case in this uh, course where we actually have two different request codes coming back to the same on activity result. So we're we're going to be pretty happy that we have this request code. Up to this point, it's been this sort of dummy parameter where we set it to an arbitrary value, we get back that arbitrary value, and it's sort of like why, and the why is going to be because we have to do two different, we have to create two, two different kinds of intents, an authentication intent and a camera intent. 
anyway, so we'll um, disambiguate those with a request code. But in this case, uh, we only have a single thing that we are, a single activity type that we are creating. It's the camera. When the camera comes back, if everything goes okay, we tell the view model things went okay. Otherwise, we tell the view model there was a failure. I've never actually seen this case arise, but you know, it, it could. So let's take a look at uh, what this looks like in the view model. <coughs> um, so uh, set photo intent is just, you know, hey, I'm, here's, here's a, a lambda, here's a function that takes no arguments and returns nothing, remember it. And I remember it in this you know, local variable. And then when someone calls on the view model, this method take photo, they pass in uh, a callback. So I wanna take a photo and I want you to let me know when that photo succeeds. And I want you to pass me the file name uh, of that photo and I'm not gonna return anything. So when I take a photo, I'm passing you this callback when the photo succeeds. So I'm going to remember this callback in a local variable. So, so photo success, photo success, right. photo success is just a local variable. It's a private variable. It takes a pat, it takes a string argument, returns unit, and you know I, I do this sort of thing where um, because I'm trying to be safe. I have default values for these, these basically function pointers, um, but that, that, that's, all, that's all this is. So this is, um, this is a uh, function pointer. I could have made it null, um, but instead I, I, I have a, a default value that actually crashes uh, with a, a, yeah, a nice message. Assert doesn't work in Android as I learned the hard way. So you have to crash your app. Okay, so photo success. So that's just, um, this is, uh, hey, when someone wants to uh, take a photo, they pass me a callback, fine. Then I, I being the view model in this case, uh, call the activity method, which actually does the start activity for result. Great, okay, so that's, yeah, you know, this is this is not so good. This is not so bad. <laughs> this is the bad part. <laughs> okay, so where is so here? Uh, this is our. This is how we create the uh, uh, URI, and I want to see where that's called. So I did get usages, and that's oh, that that is that is an exported version. So remember here, we're telling the camera uh, this is the uh, the URI. Uh, and so how do we do this? Okay, so let's take a look at this. First, we need to pick a file name. And in this case, we are going to use uh, a timestamp. We are going, we want to name our image files by timestamp such that when we just list the files, they will be in timestamp order. And so we have to put the year first, then the month, then the day, then the hour, and the minute and the seconds, and we make sure that there's a, a fixed number of uh, slots. So, you know, minute is represented as 02, not just two. Um, there's a locale to make sure that your time is displayed in a way that is familiar to your, your users because the format's slightly different in different parts of the world. So this is the format and date is sort of like the now function. So Get, get now, format it as this timestamp. That's gonna be the name of our uh, picture file. Now we need to create a URI. And the reason we need to create a URI for this uh, file name is to give permissions, okay? So where are we gonna, this is just the file name. What, what path are we gonna put it in? Well, we're gonna put it in a directory that makes sense for our application. So let's see what storage dir is. Storage dir we define up here once and for all. So um, let's see. So um, this view model is uh, what's called an Android view model. So it's slightly different from the 
previously we've just done view models. The Android view model lets us have reference to this application object, which lets us get things like a context, which is, which is kind of useful. So uh, what it also lets us get is this is just sort of this, you know, sort of magic spell that we get from Android. Um, sort of, if you uh, construct your your view model this way, you're allowed to get this app, this application context, which allows us to get our sort of applications officially sanctioned uh, picture directory. So this is a very nice way of being able to store your pictures in a known location that is sort of controlled by Android. However, this uh, location is a, it's an internal location in the sense that um, it is internal to our, sorry, word application keeps coming up, but the, it's um, uh, it, files written to this directory can only be read and written by our application. So that's why we need to get permissions. So this is our, our storage directory for all pictures. Let me get that once in the beginning. And then here we go. So here we're creating the URI to give some permissions. So we wrap uh, the file name. So we create a file name. Our local, our local photo file is in this storage directory. Uh, you know, we identify it as a JPEG with both the um, file extension and we started out with JPEG just, just so that when we're, we're looking at things uh, in, in a, a file view, we, we know exactly what we're looking at. You don't have to have this. Uh, that's our local file name. We are remembering the local file name. This is the remember part. This is just a local variable and we're storing it here so that when we get the callback, we remember where we put the, 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 uh, the photo. Doing some logging. All right, here's the, the magic. Um, get a URI for the file. We have to give it a context. We actually have to pass it this uh, um, path name, which there's some um, uh, metadata in our manifest file that I'll show you in a little bit. That That's the authority that we're, we're putting in here. This actually identifies the location on disk that lets uh, the other application find and get permissions to, to write. And then we, we pass it the local photo file. This whole uh, thing can fail with a, an IO exception. So we need to catch that exception. And, uh, and then we are done. And if uh, this process failed, I want to crash. <laughs> so if, if this were production, uh, you know, and for your, um, for your projects, it's, it's perfectly okay. I mean, I don't want you to crash in, uh, in your demo. If that happens, that's bad. Uh, but your um, uh, project does not have to be production code. There are certain kinds of uh, uh, corners you can cut. And so this is, this is one of them. Um, you know, this, by the way, in all my testing, it, this, this crash has never occurred. All right, so let's, let's take a look at, at what this authority is. If we go into the manifest file, so as part of our application, we have this provider, which provides a uh, permission. It provides grant URI permissions um, from this, this class called a file provider. And what does it provide uh, file permissions to? <laughs> There's a lot of layers of indirection here, but it provides to this resource. And believe me, I tried to actually put uh, a, uh, string constant here, and it did not like that. You have to name this resource uh, as, an, as an XML resource. And so this is in our resources directory, add XML. This is an XML directory, file paths, and this is the magic string. So what this is saying is that on our file system, there's an Android directory, there's a data subdirectory. This is the name of our app that has uh, a files and a pictures directory. So that, that get external storage dir call that we did that, you know, Android works its magic. It's not super magical. Android is basically constructing this, this file, this file name. Uh, that, that's where the pictures are. 
And this whole rigmarole is just a way of saying our application can give permission to other applications to write files in that directory. And that's what this whole thing is. So again, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just like, I used the camera app, I took a picture, uh, but there's a lot of rigmarole to, to have that work. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the getting the photo URI, fine. Now let's take a look at the success failure callbacks. So in, uh, uh, so, oh God, I shouldn't say assert because uh, assert doesn't work as I learned the hard way. But, um, you know, in, in the failure case, let's just forget about this photo file that we had uh, remembered. Um, you might think that you should delete the photo file, but if there's a failure, uh, the photo file will be deleted for you. Um, I learned that as uh, that's the way the camera app acts. At least that, that's the way I found. Like in, in the camera app, if you try to take a camera and you sort of reject that idea, uh, it doesn't create the file. If we are successful in creating the file, uh, then we want to do our callback. So whoever asked us to take this file, uh, to take this photo, passed us a callback. We are going to tell that callback what the absolute path name is of the file that we took. We're going to store this because that way later on, if we need to delete this file, we have the absolute path where we can delete it. And then uh, we are done remembering uh, this file name. And we're done remembering this callback. I should probably should reset this callback down here. Okay. So, you know, this, this the, the sort of having to set and reset our local variables is a little bit unfortunate. It would have been nice if the camera app had passed us back the file URL that, that it had written, because then we could have just pulled it from that. But that wasn't the way the API was spec'd out, and so we have to work around it. So it's a long walk for... Um, it's, it's a good example of problem solving in Android programming. So this, these are sometimes the things we have to do in order to get something that can be described in one sentence, have your app take a picture, given the constraints of view models and a single application app, single activity app, this is what you have to do in order to get things to work. Thanks.